you. Well, thanks to everyone for hopping on today. We're so excited to have the Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman speaking with us this afternoon. My name is Lauren Blankenship and joining me is Sabrina McCorder. We are both business and innovation champions with SOAR, which stands for Shaping Our Appalachian Region. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that is a champion for Appalachia, Kentucky. Through a collective impact model and identity, uh, I'm sorry, through a collective impact model, SOAR works to expand job creation, enhance regional opportunity, innovation, and identity, and support all those working to achieve these goals. SOAR's work is guided by its blueprint for the future of Appalachia, and it's our job to drive action and ensure it doesn't sit on a shelf. As part of our strategy, we work to strengthen entrepreneurial education in K through 16, as well as other program opportunities, including the co-starters core program. We're currently facilitating the first ever women founders program, which is a 10 week cohort built to provide female entrepreneurs with the tools needed to build and grow a thriving business. We believe women entrepreneurs are critical to economic growth, and our goal is to create greater opportunity and equality for the women of Appalachia by diversifying what entrepreneurship looks like in our region. In the spirit of celebrating strong women leaders, we are excited to have Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman join us today. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman is an educator, basketball coach, writer, founder of a nonprofit, and the 58th Lieutenant Governor of Kentucky. She is wife to Chris, mom to Evelyn, adopted mom to Emma, and a bonus mom to Will and Nate. Public service is a way of life for Jacqueline and her family. She was raised to offer a hand up to those in need and, as a result, has devoted her personal and professional life to serving her community, first in the classroom and now in public office. She's a tireless advocate for public education and a strong proponent of young women stepping into leadership roles. She founded Lead Kentucky, an organization that ensures Kentucky's college women are prepared and empowered to seek leadership positions on their campuses and in their professional fields. As Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline is focused on creating a comprehensive cradle to career public education and job training system in Kentucky that will produce the future leaders of our Commonwealth. As a fifth generation Mercer Countyan, she also concentrates on the many challenges facing rural Kentucky. Jacqueline is determined to build a better Kentucky for everyone. Welcome, Lieutenant Governor. We are so excited to have you today. Uh, we're going to start as we do with all of these things, and that's with an icebreaker. So I would love to know, as the weather's warming up and we welcome sp spring, uh, what is your favorite outdoor activity? So I have, uh, let me go back to when the pandemic started, uh, I was a new mom. And so my go-to for the last year has been taking walks outside with, uh, with Evelyn in, the, in her stroller and now she's walking. Um, and I actually have walked, literally I've walked a hole in two pairs of shoes. So that's how much. <laughs> I love that. Sabrina and I are, are both uh, newer moms as well. And it's so nice to see the weather warm up and be able to get them outside and just get that fresh, fresh air for sure. Yes. yes. <laughs> so true. That warm weather is perfect. I think it heals all the attitudes too that can happen from being <laughs> kicked in throughout the week. For so sure. true. So true. Sure. Well, we are so excited to have you here today. We did title this Women in Leadership. So I have to ask, what excites you about Women in Leadership? So much. Uh, you know, there is, there's, we've, we've come so far, uh, but we have so far to go. And when I look at the opportunities that um, I have because of the women who have come before me, I think about the responsibility I have to create more opportunities for the next generation of women too, right? And so as I see uh, young women using their voice and speaking up in ways that maybe I didn't even feel like I could, uh, it, it, um, it, it makes me very proud uh, to see how far women, young women especially, have come uh, in, in confidence in, in their education and in the professional life. Um, and so I'm just very excited uh, as women uh, continue to move to the top of the ranks in their profession, but also at the women who are helping to diversify uh, professions that maybe have not been um, occupied by women as much in the past. I think both of those things are very exciting. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think the earlier we start talking about that, the better. When do you feel it's important to begin talking about entrepreneurship within our school system? And what are some ways schools can begin to educate their students on the opportunities of entrepreneurship? So that's a great uh, question because uh, it goes right into the vision that I uh, have for the Cabinet of Education and Workforce Development in Kentucky. Our goal was to create a cradle to career education system. Them. And I know I've, I've talked with the folks at SOAR and we could not be more aligned uh, with our, um, you know, vision of, of how to impact Kentucky's economy. And so I'm grateful for your partnership in this. Uh, but one of the things I talk about um, it are the four E's of education and workforce development. And um, the second one is uh, for middle school to increase their exposure to uh, the industries and opportunities that exist right in their backyard. And so I would say that that would be um, ideal if we could introduce our students at the, at the middle school age to these kinds of opportunities so that when they move into high school, they can actually go out and get some experience, that's the 30, um, some experience before they move into whatever post-secondary life looks like to them. And so I think um, exposing our students to opportunities really can't happen soon enough, but we have to do that before we also ask uh, for them to be able to have experiences in the field. And so um, in my mind, the ideal place to start right now is middle school. And once we get that down, I say we move right on uh, to elementary even to give these kids an opportunity. Yeah, I think you've definitely touched on a really good point there. I think the sooner we can expose them to the opportunities out there, the faster that they're gonna grasp onto those. So how critical is education to keeping our talent here and creating pathways to jobs for the future? It is, it is the foundation. Uh, so often we, you know, whether it's it's politics or or within the media, the focus is on job creation. The focus is on uh, bringing new businesses in or businesses that expand. Uh, and what so often goes um, unspoken in those conversations is the climate and the culture that created that environment, right? And so, if we have a business that wants to come to Kentucky. If we have a business in Kentucky that wants to expand, if we have um, an opportunity to create jobs, it is only because of the education and job training system that we have established in our state. And so I always say we cannot even begin to talk about economic development until we're first willing to have the conversation about investing in our education systems because the future of our economy is in our classrooms today. Yeah, I love that. And as I mentioned earlier, we've been doing a, a co-starters program for female founders. And so each week we've had special sessions. And what we've loved is that it's, um, you know, getting to hear, hear everyone's story and something we were talking about with the group yesterday is no one had it easy the whole way. You know, we all kind of trip and fall as leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, and so I'd love to hear from you as well. What have been your biggest lessons that you've learned in your journey as a female leader? And have you had any mentors along the way? Oh gosh, yes. Um, so uh, let me go back to my my basketball coaching days um, uh, and and give the advice that I give I gave to my players, and that it, it it is never what happens to you; it is always how you react to it that matters. Um, so often um, we see accomplished women, like when I look at the women I look up to, like um, Senator Georgia Davis Powers, first African American senator, uh, female. Senator Senator in Kentucky, um, former Governor Martha Lane Collins, the first and only female governor we've had in this state. Uh, I could go on and on. We see their success, right? We see when they make it. What we don't see is their path to success is never a straight line. It's never a straight line. There are always stumbling blocks. There are always things that, um, that, uh, cause you to have to reevaluate or to think differently. Uh, and, um, you know, it's really important for us to understand that every person goes through that on, on their way uh, uh, through their, their professional career. Um, but yeah, the women that, that, that I look up to, you know, it, or even, you know, I, I didn't even mention Crit Allen and she's like, um, you know, to me, she is like the, 
uh, epitome of what all women uh, in Kentucky, especially women in politics in Kentucky, would strive to be as well respected as she is and um, just, you know, just steadfast in everything that she did. Um, and, you know, I think about the, the challenges that you face along the way, you know, so many people, uh, even though you hear about them when they get to office or when they, you know, become a small business owner and all those things, um, they're not successful in their first try, right? You have to try and you have to figure out what didn't work and how you would do it differently and, and um, moving on. And then you have to make the decision, is this worth fighting for? Is this something that I believe in so much that I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to keep going. And that resilience is ultimately what uh, leads us all to success, right? It's, it's never, um, never about the, all, you know, someone being successful all the way through their journey. That doesn't happen. Uh, but it's how you respond that, that really matters and makes a difference and shapes who you are. I love that you touch on the importance of the mentorship and the, the ladies that you look up to. As Lauren mentioned, we are in co-starters right now. And we're on week nine and from week one to week nine, the difference in the confidence level that these ladies have gained, especially several of them are in a male dominated industry to see that confidence level be boosted and to feel more secure and to feel um, nurtured by the group has just been so amazing to watch unfold and develop. Um, so we are so thankful that they, there are strong ladies who have already paved the path. Um, for us so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel and that we have these strong leaders to look up to like yourself. So I think that's really incredible. Um, over, so you've had a really long journey. Um, you, you wear so many different hats. What are some highlights from your journey that you've taken so far? Oh gosh. Um, so one thing I would say, my, my career is, is really rooted in, um, education and athletics. Uh, that's just, it's, it just shaped who I am uh, personally and professionally. Uh, and so I, I gained so much from those two arenas. And so it's, um, it's interesting that, I, that I'm sitting where I'm sitting today because most people don't have that background. Um, but what I will say is this, um, in education, uh, you know, I, I worked from the classroom as a civics teacher, my goal in becoming a teacher was to inspire the same love of government that I had uh, growing up because so many people either don't understand it or they get frustrated by it. Um, and so my goal was to um, not just to educate, but uh, to help our kids figure out um, if you are frustrated, how can you productively change what's frustrating you, right? That's the key. Um, and so I learned from the classroom to advocate for my students. And that experience has really led me to where I am today. And so I would say a highlight of being in education uh, was the ability to, what I, this is what I say in Lee, Kentucky, find your passion, get involved and take the lead, right? So my passion is education. I got involved in the profession, I advocated, I became a leader, and um, eventually was able to utilize um, those skills to actually take the lead in a way that I am now the Secretary of Education and Workforce Development. I'm the highest uh, elected teacher in the state of Kentucky, which is insane for me to still say. Like, I, it's, it's crazy for me to say that, but it's true. Um, so my, my point would be, be careful what you ask for sometimes. <laughs> um, and then and when it comes to athletics, I, I say this all the time, there is nothing that prepared me more when it comes to having a thick skin than to being a competitive athlete and to being a coach. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you have to let go. You can't fight every battle. You have to be, um, you know, you, you have to be mindful of what's really important and to understand that no matter what you do, there are going to be people out there who either criticize it or make it something that it's not. Um, and that's hard. It's a lot harder for your family than it is for you. But um, my experience in athletics really taught me uh, to have that tough skin and to be able to handle criticism uh, and to remember and be mindful of what's important and, and to focus on that big picture. Uh, and so those are the highlights from my career that I really believe helped 
uh, shape who I am and, and helped me to be sitting here today. Yeah, I love that recurring theme of resilience. And mm -hmm. I see that across the board is that, you know, that's what, if you can get up the next day and just keep, keep going at it, you know, you can always, always get there. Like you said, sometimes we see the highlight reels and we don't always see the behind the scenes, but it's important to get up and um, continue to try each day. Um, do you have any advice for someone looking to start a business in Kentucky, especially those female founders? So I, when it comes to, um, you know, kicking off your career and finding uh, finding your niche, essentially. Uh, you know, what I just said is, is so true. You know, you find your passion and you get involved and you take the lead. Uh, that doesn't mean that you jump to a leadership position right off the bat. It means that you learn uh, and you study and you seek out uh, mentors and you take advice from people who have walked that path before. And so the best advice I could give to young entrepreneurs in Kentucky is to uh, uh, find a mentor and find someone that you look up to and don't be afraid to reach out to them and ask questions and advice. Um, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to talk to young women and say, I made this mistake. Don't make the same mistake I did. Learn from, learn from me, right? Uh, and I know that business uh, leaders feel the same way. And so, um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Take, up, take advantage of the knowledge that's out there and the experience that's out there before you uh, step into that arena, because that will help you to be even more prepared if you learn from folks who have come before you. So find that mentor um, and, and really work on that relationship because it, it will serve you in the long run. I think so often we find entrepreneurship is a solo path. And really, like we've talked about today, it's not. It's so important to build that team around you, to be a team player, to find those people who are better at something than you are and bring them onto your team so that you can focus on your strengths and they can focus on theirs. Um, so I really love that you're just really reiterating the fact that it takes more than one person to run a business and to start a business and to chase a dream um, and to get to any level, no matter if it's a small business or a lieutenant governor, it, it takes the whole team to get there. So I think that's really it incredible. It so that, uh, I'm just, I'm blown away. <laughs> You're just amazing. So uh, I think we have a few minutes here. Do you have time for any questions or? Yes, I can take them. Okay. Okay, if anybody has any questions, we could drop them in the chat. Let's see. Just a minute now. Look. Sarah is uh, commenting from Lexington. She just said hello and really appreciates the webinar and opportunity to hear these insights. So. We're glad to have you, Sarah. Thanks for, for joining us. Sarah also put a question in the question here. It says, some people in the community would say that is not my problem or gender equality is not my problem or le leveling the playing field is not my problem. What advice would you give to those who say that and also those of us who hear it often? Yeah, that can be, uh, that can be frustrating, obviously, uh, when you... Um, are used to, to being surrounded by strong women who have really blazed a trail um, and who have never backed away from a challenge or a problem because it didn't directly affect them. Uh, to, when you run into people like that uh, along the way, and you will, uh, it's, it's frustrating. Um, and so one of the things that I uh, like to do when I talk about women leaders um, and, and why, you know, equal pay is important, why, um, you know, um, representation is important. Uh, you look at it from a business model. You look at it from an economic model. Uh, and everybody's a player in the economy. Uh, and so you look at, for example, all of the studies that have come out about how the more diverse a, a um, corporation's board is, the more successful it is, right? So that doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you, you have to have women in leadership positions along the way. Um, you look at um, the, the statistics on equal pay. Well, 
uh, if I'm in the private sector and I'm making less than my male counterpart, that doesn't just affect me. That affects my family. That affects the my local economy. Economy uh, that affects my small business, right? Uh, and so all of those things are, uh, it, it's critical to say, um, to, be, to be able to make the point that about equity and representation uh, about you personally, but also to take it, to scale it to the larger picture of the economy and what it really means for all of us and, and Kentucky's economy and America's economy. And that changes the conversation. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And to wrap up, what excites you about the future of Kentucky coming out of the pandemic? We head into warmer days and <laughs> better times ahead. Well, I'm just thrilled that, that we are seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. I know everybody feels that way, whether it is school or uh, business or the restaurant industry or whatever it is. Uh, I know that we are all excited to get back to normal, um, and I'm going to air quote normal, uh, but the thing that I would like to talk about, like to kind of mention here as, as we move out of the pandemic is it is equally important that we think about and acknowledge what is not worth going back to. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of normalcy that we want. We want to be able to have dinner with friends and do things like that. But what are the things, what are the ways that we've evolved and changed that now you say, gosh, I don't want to go back to doing it the old way because it was so inefficient and ineffective. Right. So you can take this and turn it into a silver lining uh, of, of progress uh, and, and uh, you know, moving forward out of this pandemic. And it's just really important to be mindful too of those things. So, so often we think about, gosh, I'll be so glad when this is over. I'll be so glad when I don't have to do this anymore or when I finally get to do this. But again, think back to pre-pandemic uh, and think about how we've changed in, in good ways in efficiency and effective and you know how effective we are in work now. And just be very cognizant about what you don't want to slide back into as well as you move forward. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah, I think it's so important to see that silver lining opportunity for growth because, um, you know, the system might have been a little bit broken and COVID exposed that. And so now we can move forward. We have this opportunity for growth and that is the silver lining of it all for sure. Um, so yeah. I love, I love that. So thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor, for spending some time with us today and giving us an insight on what it's like to be a woman leader in Kentucky. You are doing amazing things. And we appreciate it. Just know that we're watching because we love it. And we, we love to have somebody like you to look up to. So thank you for that. And thank you to everybody else for tuning in today. If you are a founder, we would love to hear from you. Our emails are going to be in the chat so you can grab those. And we look forward to seeing you all for another chat like this soon. So I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.